Every Webflow project needs global classes known as utilities. These can be used inside any section on our site. We name them with dashes instead of underscores to show it's a utility. A common one we could have is an H2 class that sets a font size, line height, and weight. Anytime we want an element to look like our H2, we just apply that utility. Another common class we could have is a custom class. We name these with underscores to show it's specific to a single section or component type. So this heading should only be used inside our hero section, and we might want that to be the only all caps heading throughout our site. Now, sometimes we'll want to use these global utility styles and only affect them when they're inside a specific section. So not every H2, but only the hero H2. I'll show the wrong way to do that first, and that's to add a stacks class known as a combo on top of this utility. So we could call this is dash, and this is just showing us that this class only exists when it's on top the H2. We can make any overrides like making it all caps, setting our max character count, and these changes aren't affecting other H2s throughout our site. It's only affecting ones that have is hero. Now, some problems with this is first, if we need to add another utility later on, we get a utility sandwich with our custom styles in the middle that makes it harder to edit. But a more serious problem is if we need to switch our hero headings to H1, well, if we apply that H1 utility, is hero is no longer an option that only existed on top of H2, so we've lost all of our overrides. A better way to handle this is apply overrides to the custom class. So we can set all caps, we can set our max character count, and then we can just add our utility on top. And when we do this, we get the best of both worlds. If we edit this global utility here of H2, it will also affect this hero heading. But if we go ahead and change this hero heading class and we decide to set its color or something, that's only affecting the hero ones. It's not affecting other H2s. So this allows us to stack other classes on top as needed, add and remove them. And it allows us to change the style. If we want to switch this to H1 in the future, all of those overrides are still saved on this base class. So we didn't lose any of the styles we applied. This also allows us to dial in changes across breakpoints. So this font size would look fine for most H2s that are only a couple words, but for our hero heading, because it's all caps, because it's a longer block of text, we need to break away from the H2 font size on mobile. So we could remove this H2 and then dial in our mobile font size for the hero heading here to be whatever we want. And then we can just add this H2 back on. Even if we set a custom font size on this global H2 class, the hero heading is still gonna override it with its own unique size. Every single element on our site needs a custom class, even if that custom class has no styles applied to it. If it has no styles, it won't show up in our global site CSS, so we can keep things clean, but it's there in case we need to add a custom style later. It also helps with custom code. If we were to target this text h2 inside our hero with CSS or JavaScript, our code would break if we ever switch this to an h1. But if we have a class we know will never change, we can target this class and then switch the style freely. It also prevents accidental global changes. Without a custom class, someone inexperienced can easily switch all of the H2s throughout the site to text align center without meaning to. But if all of our elements have a custom class first, applying styles here doesn't affect the global H2 used throughout the site. Custom classes also provide clear labels in the navigator. Without a custom class, it's not instantly clear that this first text is for a paragraph and the second text is for a disclaimer. But with our custom class, we're naming these based on the purpose they solve in our design. And this allows us to switch out any utility for another one. So if I rename this text main, it's not going to rename my global text main. It's just renaming the class that was stacked on top this custom class. So I could rename this to a different utility like text small. And when I do that, see the main text main is still there, but it renamed every instance of this class that was stacked on top of our subtext. So if we head to any of our other tabs now, what we'll notice is that all of the subtext inside them has been changed to the text small style. We could try and rename this to a different utility like opacity full. Now, once we apply that, it renamed this to opacity full across every instance of the subtext. So we're able to make global updates for repeatable elements like footer links, menu links, anything that small elements that doesn't necessarily need to be its own component.
As much as possible, it's best to try to keep any overrides on our base custom class, but if for some reason we did apply an override like text to line sender to the combination of these two classes, if we need to switch our style in the future to H1, notice how when we rename it, it still keeps the override in place and it just inherits the rest of the H1 styles. And our custom classes can be as specific as we'd like. So if we have five different types of hero components throughout our site, typing hero underscore could show the classes for all of them. Then we can have a specific variation, like whether this is our tall hero or our card hero or anything else. Then we plug the element name. So this is the section element for our tall hero. And we can repeat that process across all of these elements. So with practice, the process of applying custom classes becomes effortless. I've even developed a Chrome extension where if we hit the right arrow key, it pulls the class name of the parent minus that last word. So we can easily just add in the element name like container here and apply our specific variations. Maybe we have a flex and a gap and a min height of 100 VH. And the styles we're applying here won't apply to every container. It's just applying to that hero tall one. And we can repeat that process for all of our elements. T hero tall heading, and I could add any utility like H2. I could have a paragraph, hero tall paragraph, and I could have a utility like text small. And these element names like section container heading paragraph are highly reusable across all our different component types. We just need a unique component name for each class we create. And once we have these sectioned off by their components, we can easily just turn it into a component like hero tall and everything is named accordingly to the elements we're using.